their speech will go today i am going to start a class for fifth semester mathematics honors the paper is dsc1 mnt ac 5126 mechanics i am going to start mechanics for fifth semester cbcs course fifth semester i shall discuss statics and dynamics board first of all i am going to start dynamics the first chapter which i am going to start is motion in a straight line motion in a straight line under variable uh, acceleration variable acceleration motion in a straight line under variable acceleration first uh, let me remind you something let me remind you. remind you. let me remind you first <coughs> you have already known the terms velocity the terms acceleration velocity accelerations like this in the lower class level rate of change of displacement rate of change of displacement is called velocity and rate of change of velocity rate of change of velocity with respect to time change of velocity with respect to time time it is also with respect to time rate of change of velocity with respect to time suppose if v is the velocity of a particle velocity of a particle x is the distance dx by dt is called the velocity you have already known this acceleration acceleration rate of change of velocity acceleration means suppose this is f f stands for acceleration f stands for acceleration and sometimes the accelerations will be written as like this this means the accelerations a double c n means we will mean that it is acceleration acceleration equal to dv dt rate of change of velocity rate of change of velocity if v is the velocity rate of change of velocity this is equal to d dt of just <coughs> velocity will be equal to dx by dt dx by dt and which will be written as d2x by dt square it can be written as d2x by dt square now acceleration equal to f equal to dv dt this can be written as dv by dx dx by dt this can be written as like this dv by dx dx by dt this is equal to dv by dx for dx by dt you may write it as v this is equal to v dv by dx v dv by dx thus acceleration equal to acceleration equal to suppose f it can be written as d2x by dt square sometimes you may write like this d2x by dt square it stands for the acceleration this is equal to dv by dt you may write this also and sometimes we will apply v dv by dx sometimes we apply v dv by dx v dv by dx the expressions for acceleration is like this 
as it is. We are going to study motion in a straight line under variable acceleration. Before there, we uh, in the previous uh, uh, in the lower level classes we have already obtained some formulas when a particle is moving under constant acceleration when a particle is moving under constant acceleration suppose under constant acceleration it is a course of previous classes lower level class if a particle is moving If a particle is moving in a straight line, straight line from the point A, point O, with initial velocity U, If a particle is moving in a straight line from the point O with initial velocity u and if uh, u with constant acceleration first with constant acceleration this means acceleration constant acceleration f, f. Hmm. if V be the velocity of the particle. If V be the velocity of the particle, particle after time t, after time t, and if and if it uh, <coughs> describe. Describes a distance s, and the, if describes a distance s during this period of time, during this period of time, period of time t, then, then v equal to u plus f t number 2 s equal to ut plus half of ft square number 3 v square equal to u square plus twice f s we have already obtained these three formulas if a particle is moving in a straight line under constant acceleration constant acceleration means acceleration constant acceleration is uniform through the sun then we have obtained uh, these three formulas. Using calculus, uh, it will take uh, hardly 5 to 10 minutes. Within uh, uh, Using calculus, I am going to prove these three formulas. Right? I am going to use calculus to prove these three. <coughs> Suppose O is the starting point and after a time A, O is the starting point, a particle is moving in this direction with acceleration equal to F, acceleration is equal to F and velocity at this point equal to U, velocity at this point equal to U, it starts from A, this. It is the starting point. O is the starting point. O is the starting point. And at this point A, velocity equal to V. And suppose this is equal to S. This is equal to S. And the time taken from this to this is equal to T. Time taken from this to this is equal to T. Right? 
Let the particle move from the point there. Let the particle moves from the point A, from the point O with initial velocity U. With initial velocity U and the constant acceleration F. With initial velocity u and constant acceleration f. Constant acceleration f. The acceleration is with constant acceleration f. At time t, it travels at this stage. A distance s. At time t it travels a distance s. Suppose O A is equal to S. O A equal to S. Let the V be the velocity of the particle at A. Let V be the velocity of the particle. V the velocity of the particle. Velocity of the particle at now, acceleration equal to d2s dt square. Acceleration is equal to d2s dt square. We have already mentioned it. Acceleration can be expressed in three ways. d2s dt square. If s is the distance. Uh, at the time, if x is the distance, then... Uh, a distance travel in time t then acceleration will be equal to d 2 x by dt square and it can be written as dv by dt also it can be written as v dv by ds like this acceleration is equal to this therefore equation of motion is d 2 s by dt square equal to f f is constant mind that this means d dt of ds dt equal to f integrating we get integrating we get with respect to t integrating with respect to t you may write with respect to t with respect to t we get it will be ds dt equal to integration f dt plus a where a is the constant of integration where a is the constant of integration? Is the constant of integration. Where a is the constant of integration. This means ds dt equal to ft plus a. ft plus a. ds dt is equal to ft plus a. Suppose this is number one. You see here uh, the constant where a is the constant of integration. The constant of integration can be obtained by using the initial condition. Initially, when the particle is at a is at O, then the velocity of the particle was u and the time t initially at the point O. Initially, at the point O, point O, ds by dt equal to velocity equal to u when t equal to zero, t equal to zero. Therefore, from one you will get u equal to zero plus a. This means a equal to zero. Therefore, subset, therefore one becomes. Therefore, one becomes ds by dt equal to ft plus u ds by dt velocity velocity at the point uh, a ds by dt velocity of the point a ds by dt equal to velocity of the particle. 
at the point A. Velocity of the particle at the point A. Therefore, V uh, at the point A. This is equal to V. Therefore, V is equal to U plus FT. V equal to U plus FT. The first one has been proved. V is equal to U plus FT. We have proved number one. Now, P equal to U plus FT. This means it is um, nothing but U plus FT. You can write P equal to DS by DT. This means DS equal to U plus FT DT. Activity. Integrating we get integrating we get integration ds integration u plus activity plus b where b is the constant of integration where b is the constant of integration. Where B is the constant of the picture. Constant of the picture. Where B is the constant of the picture. Hmm. This means it is as equal to you are integrating with respect to T, means it U is constant, initial velocity constant, U T plus f of t square by 2 integration of t with respect to t plus b uh, suppose this is number 2 uh, this is number 2 suppose this is number 3 initially at the point o initially at the point o initially at the point o s is equal to 0 distance travel to what the Particle was at the point O. That means S is equal to 0. Then S is equal to 0 when T equal to 0. S is equal to 0 when T equal to 0. Therefore, from T, therefore, from T will get 0 is equal to 0 plus 0 plus B. This means, uh, <coughs> this means B equal to 0. Therefore, from 3 you will get, 3 implies means from 3 you will get S is equal to ut plus half of ft square this uh, formula has also been proved s is equal to ut plus half of ft square here f is a constant acceleration f is a constant acceleration now squaring down two implies p equal to u plus suppose this is number four this is number four u plus ft Squaring we get, squaring both sides we get, squaring both sides we get, squaring both sides we get, v square equal to u plus ft whole square, this means v square is equal to u square plus twice u ft plus f square t square, if you square it you will get this, squaring you will get this. This means v square is equal to u square plus 2 times of f common 2f common you will get ut here plus f is common 2 is here 1 by 2 should be uh, written here half of f already been written another f should be written f t square this means v square equal to u square plus twice f this is nothing but s using 4 by 4 by 4 v square is equal to u square plus twice f s you may prove this in this image such type of things have already been derived <coughs> earlier 
This code is going to be u square plus twice x. Now, this uh, formula number, uh, uh, you may write it, this formula number 5, can be obtained in an another way also. Alternative method to obtain formula number 5. Alternative method to obtain formula number 5. Alternative method. Obtain formula 5. Formula 5. We know that acceleration can also be written as V dv by ds. Acceleration can also be written as V dv by ds. It can be written as dv by dt, it can be written as d2s by dt square, and it can be written as v dv by ds. Therefore, v dv by ds should be equal to f. v dv by ds equal to s, f. This means v dv equal to f ds. v dv, this is equal to s, f ds. Integrating, we get. Integrating, we get. Integration V dv equal to integration f ds plus c, where c is the constant of integration, it is number 6, no? where c is the constant of integration, c is the constant of integration, c is the constant of integration. <coughs> This means v square by 2 equal to fs plus c. Suppose this is number 7. fs plus c. Suppose this is number 7. Initially at the point O. Initially at O. At O. Velocity was u. The initial velocity was u. The particle uh, starts moving from the point O with initial velocity u and constant acceleration f. When t is equal to 0, that, uh, when t is equal to 0, no, when s is equal to 0 here, yeah. when s is equal to 0, a, a, the relation is between v and s, then s, the distance, s distance is from 0 to a, from 0 to 0, s should be equal to 0. Therefore, s is equal to 0. Therefore, from 7, you will get u square by 2 equal to f into 0 plus c. This means c equal to u square divided by 2. Therefore, put the constant of integration in 7. v square by 2. Put the constant of integration in 7. u square by 2. This means v square equal to u square plus twice fs. In this way also you can find this formula. v square is equal to u square plus twice fs. You should remember all this formula. <coughs> now, another uh, topic, I, uh, another uh, <coughs> formula I am going to give. That is, To find if a particle is moving if a particle is moving with constant acceleration if a particle is moving with constant acceleration f Which uh, moving with constant acceleration f with initial velocity with initial velocity u means 
the starting point is uh, the starting point is uh, uh, at the starting point the velocity of the particle is initial velocity a particle is moving with constant acceleration f with initial velocity u then find the distance covered by the particle particle at the nth second at the nth second to find the distance uh, traveled by the particle distance covered by the particle in the nth second you see we have obtained a uh, formula which is s is equal to ut plus half of ft square u is the initial velocity f is the constant acceleration t stands for time here uh, it is uh, given nth second, nth second. In place of t, it is l. A particle is moving. This is the starting point. This is the starting point. Point. Here the initial velocity. Initial velocity starting point. Initial velocity u. Starting point initial velocity. Suppose it is uh, moving in this direction with constant acceleration f, constant acceleration f, constant acceleration f. After time t, after time t, it travels a distance s. After time t, it travels a distance s. Distance s, s and t, s stands for uh, distance traveled by the particle from this position to this position. t, time taken by the particle from this position to this, this position. <coughs> Not t, uh, I am writing it at m, m, because it is given in m, m sequence. The nth seconds. Suppose this is uh, S1. Mm. S1. Distance travel in S1. Suppose in n minus 1 seconds, n seconds, n minus 1 seconds, it travels a distance n minus, uh, in n minus 1 seconds, it travels a distance S2. Then at the nth seconds, it, this, uh, it travels from this position to this position, from this position, mind it, from this position to this position. We are going to find the distance from this position to this position, which will be the distance traveled by the particle at the nth second, which will be the distance traveled by the particle at the nth second. Let S1 be the distance traveled by the particle at the n second, at n seconds. Initial velocity u given and the constant acceleration f, uh, f is also given. We should not repeat it. Let S1 be the distance traveled. by the particle. Let S1 be the distance traveled by the particle in n seconds. In n years, seconds. S1 be the distance traveled by the particle in n seconds. Also let S2 be the distance Travel by that particle from uh, particle in n minus one seconds in n minus one seconds from this to this. 
the distance traveled is s1 from this to this in n minus 1 seconds the distance traveled by the particle is s2 what is our aim we are going to find the distance traveled by the particle at the nth second this means from this to this therefore therefore if sn be the distance traveled by the particle traveled by the particle let sn be the distance traveled by the particle at the nth second then distance traveled by the particle at the nth second then sn should be equal to s1 minus s2 s1 should be equal to the s1 minus s2 s1 is equal to this s2 equal to this now s1 equal to suppose this is number one now s1 equal to now s1 equal to distance table by the particle in n seconds use the formula s is equal to ut plus half of ft square s is equal to u in place of t u should write m plus half of f t square means you should write m square right s2 equal to distance table by the particle in n minus 1 seconds right f n minus 1 seconds right like this therefore from 1 you will get now i am writing here <coughs> right. therefore one in place record distance sn equal to s1 minus s2 this is equal to un plus half of f n square minus u n minus 1 plus half of f n minus 1 whole square this will be the record distance. This will be the record distance. Just calculate it. This means SN equal to equal to UN plus half of FN square minus UN plus U. It is U. It is U un plus u minus half of f half of f n minus 1 whole square n square minus twice n plus 1 this means sn equal to this un un will be cancelled u plus half of f n square <coughs> Minus half of f n square minus minus plus one by two two cancel f n it will be f n minus half of f minus half of f these two terms will also be cancelled this means s n is equal to u plus f n minus half of f this means s n equal to u plus Take half of f common, it will be twice n minus 1. This is the required formula. Distance traveled in the nth second is, distance traveled in the nth second is, sn equal to u plus half of f twice n minus 1. You should know these formulas. Uh, therefore, I have explained this. <coughs> We shall solve uh, problems when the acceleration varies. When the acceleration varies. Before that, I am going to discuss with you some simple problems. Some simple problems. After that, I will uh, solve some harder problems. Just remember this. Remember this. Perhaps you have noted down. 
let us try to solve this. It's a very, very simple problem. A particle moves along a straight line, number one. A particle moves along a straight line and its distance from a fixed point on the line after the t second from star is given by this. This is the condition. Distance and the, the relation between distance and time. It moves with constant acceleration. It is the relation between distance and time. You have to find the acceleration and show that the acceleration is constant. It is uh, obvious that A, B and C are constants. A, B and C are constant. The given uh, relation is x equal to a plus bt plus ct square. This is the given condition. The relation between x and t. Differentiating with respect to t, we get differentiating with respect to t. With respect to t. With respect to t, it will be dx dt equal to b plus twice ct. It will be like this. What is this? This is nothing but velocity. Because rate of change of rate of change of displacement is the velocity. It is it stands for the velocity. Again differentiating with respect to t. Again differentiating with respect to t you will get d2x dt square equal to 0 plus twice c it is nothing but acceleration it is nothing but acceleration therefore acceleration equal to twice c equal to constant therefore the particle moves with constant acceleration therefore the particle moves with constant acceleration Particle moves with constant acceleration. Therefore, the particle moves with constant acceleration. Very simple. We have done number one. It is very simple. We have already done such type of questions in class 11, 12, 12 level. <coughs> now I am going to solve the number question number two. The law of motion of a body moving along a straight line is x is equal to half of bt. P stands for velocity, x stands for distance. x being the distance from a fixed point on the line at time t and v is velocity dr. V velocity t time x distance. Prove that uh, it moves with a constant acceleration. Same question. We have to show that the acceleration is constant. We have to show that the acceleration is constant. Now, <clears throat> the law of motion is the law of motion is x is equal to half of bt. X is equal to half of bt. Suppose this is number one. Differentiating one with respect to t. Differentiating one with respect to t. t. You will get dx dt equal to half of v plus t dv dt you, you may write like this v plus dv dt i am writing in this <coughs> side on this side right this means from this what is this dt rate of change of displacement it is velocity therefore v equal to it will be half of v plus half of t dv dt this means v by 2 equal to half of t dv dt. This means v equal to t dv dt. This means v is equal to t into f where f equal to dv dt equal to acceleration. f is equal to dv dt equal to acceleration. This is f, t into f. Suppose this is number 2. Right? Now differentiate this with respect to t. Differentiating 2 with respect to t. Now differentiating 2. 2 with respect to t. We get dv dt 
equal to t dx dt plus f in one with respect to t it will be like this with respect to t db dt equal to acceleration f t dx dt plus f since db dt this is equal to the acceleration f since this db dt is the solution this f this f will be cancelled this means t d f dt equal to constant equal to zero t is equal to zero means the particle is not moving at all therefore d f dt equal to zero this means d f dt equal to zero if you integrate this f is equal to constant integrating we get f equal to constant Integrating, we get f equal to constant. Integrating, we get f equal to constant. That is acceleration equal to constant. Therefore, the particle moves. Therefore, the particle moves with a constant acceleration. constant acceleration therefore the particle moves with the constant acceleration we have brought these two problems let us try to solve such type of problems let us try to solve another problem <coughs> let me first remove Let us try to solve these two problems. First one is a particle moving along the x-axis according to the law x square equal to this a t square plus twice b t plus c a b c are constant acceleration we have to show that the acceleration varies as 1 by x cube we have to show that the acceleration varies as 1 by x cube the given law of forces the given law of forces x square equal to a t square plus twice bt plus c number one differentiating one with respect to x we get with respect to t we get differentiating one with respect to t we get one with respect to t we get it will be twice x dx dt equal to twice a t plus twice b 2, 2 will be cancelled. x dx dt equal to a t plus b. Or you may write dx dt. This is equal to a t plus b divided by x. You see, dx by dt, it stands for the velocity of the particle. dx by dt, it stands for the velocity of the particle. Suppose uh, this is number 2. Differentiate 2 again with respect to t. Differentiating 2 again with respect to t we get. Differentiating 2 again with respect to t we get. Again with respect to t we get. D2x dt square. It is the acceleration. We have got the acceleration. We have to show that the acceleration varies as 1 by x cube. This is equal to with respect to t differentiation, it will be x square. X is also a function of t, x square. H, you may write d dt of a t plus b minus a t plus b dx dt. Dx dt. You may write this. You may write this. Now, <coughs> Acceleration varies as 1 by x cube. We have to show this one. This means d2x dt square equal to x square. It will be h with respect to t differentiate. It will be a minus a t plus b 
dx dt you use uh, number 2 at plus b divided by using 2 using 2 using 2 this means d2x dt square equal to this x write it here x cube therefore it will be a x square minus a t plus b whole square minus a t plus b whole square right this means from this i am writing here d2 x dt square it stands for the acceleration this is equal to oh A. What is uh, x square? It was a t square plus twice b t plus c. A t square plus twice b t plus c. It was like this. Minus it minus it will be a square t square plus twice a b t plus b square plus b square divided by x cube you will get this one this means d two x by d t square will be equal to a square t square plus twice a b t plus a c minus a square t square minus twice a b t minus b square. A t plus b square. B square. Divided by x cube. A square t square, a square t square will be cancelled. Twice a b t, twice a b t will be cancelled. This means d 2 x by d t square will be equal to a c minus b square divided by x cube. Is it? Let's see. B square divided by x cube. Therefore, acceleration. It is nothing but acceleration. Therefore, acceleration equal to constant divided by x cube. This means acceleration varies as one by x cube. Proved. We have to prove this one. Acceleration varies as 1 by x cube. Acceleration varies as 1 by x cube. Right? Acceleration varies as 1 by x cube. Now, <coughs> try to solve this number 4. The velocity of a particle moving along the x-axis is given by this. Now, a relation between the displacement and the velocity is given. Between the velocity and displacement, displacement is, is given. Find the range of motion. We have to find the range of motion. And uh, f is its acceleration at distance x. When it covers a distance x, its acceleration is f is it acceleration then we have to show that p square plus f square equal to 4 then we have to show that now <clears throat> let me write their solution the given relation is p square equal to 4x minus x square suppose this is number one the given relation is this. Now, find its range of motion. Range of motion. The range of motion is range of motion is given by range of motion is given by velocity equal to zero. Therefore, one implies. 0 equal to 4x minus x square. 
This means x into 4 minus x equal to 0. This means x equal to 0, x equal to 4. Therefore, the range of motion is Zero is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to four. Means when in the x-axis the particle is moving, what does it mean? In the x-axis the particle is moving. In the x-axis the particle is moving. This is zero, one, two, three. Suppose this is four, minus one, minus two, like this. In the x-axis, the particle is moving. X lies between 0 and 4. From this position to this position, the particle is moving. From this position and this position, this particle is moving. In this position, velocity of the particle is 0. And this position also, the velocity of particle is equal to 0. Right? The particle moves. When x is equal to 0, we are between the points when x is equal to 0 and when x is equal to 4. When x is equal to 0, the velocity of the particle becomes 0. When x is equal to 4 also, the velocity of the particle becomes 0. Therefore, the range of the motion should be 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 4. This is the range of the range of motion. Next, come to the second part. <coughs> Come to the second part. Now, um, F is its acceleration. Then we have to show that V square is equal to F square plus uh, V square plus F square is equal to 4. V square is given. From 1 we can find the acceleration. It is given the relation between velocity and displacement. The velocity and displacement is given. Differentiate 1 with respect to x. We get. Differentiating 1 with respect to x, we get. Differentiating 1 with respect to x, we get. We get twice v dv by dx equal to 4 minus twice x. This means v dv by dx should be equal to 2 minus x. 2 minus x. V dv by dx stands for the acceleration of the particle. And acceleration is given f. Given to be equal to f. Therefore, f is equal to. This means f equal to 2 minus x. 2 minus x. Number 3. f is equal to 2 minus x. This is number 2. Now, <coughs> v square plus f square. Now, v square plus x square equal to v square means 4x minus x square plus f square means 2 minus x whole square using 1 and 2. Using 1 and 2. Using 1 and 2. It should be equal to 4. This means 4x minus x square plus 4 minus 4x plus x square. Plus 4x minus 4x cancel. Minus x square plus x square cancel. This is equal to 4. Therefore, v square plus f square is equal to 4. 2. Simple, simple questions. Simple question. This is equal to 4. Let us try to solve some more problems. <clears throat> Let us try to solve these two problems. Number 1. Today's question number 5. If T be regarded as a function of the velocity V, if T be regarded as the function of velocity V, prove that the rate of decrease of acceleration is given by this F being the acceleration. Given by F cube d to T by dV square. If T be regarded as a function of V, and rate of decrease of acceleration, rate of decrease of acceleration. Let us see. <clears throat> T is regarded. T is regarded 
as a function of of velocity v. Let t equal to f p. t be a function of velocity v. t is equal to f p. This is number one things. Also, the rate of decrease of acceleration f is equal to acceleration. It is given. F is equal to acceleration. It is given. It is given. F is equal to acceleration. Rate of decrease of acceleration. Rate of decrease of acceleration will be equal to minus d f by d t. Rate of decrease of acceleration will be equal to minus d f by d t. We have to find minus d f by dt and we have to show that minus d f by dt is equal to f cube d to t by dt square we have to show this minus d f by dt should be equal to f cube d to t by dt square we have to show this we are given that t is equal to a function of t using this relation p is the velocity p is the velocity <clears throat> differentiating one one with respect to t we get we get you will get dt by dt with respect to one if you differentiate it with respect to t first differentiate with respect to p then differentiate it it with respect to t with respect to t dt dt this will be equal to 1 phi dash v it is nothing but f since dv dt rate of change of velocity is equal to acceleration f equal to acceleration f is equal to this this means f equal to 1 by phi dash v this means f equal to phi dash v whole to the power minus 1 whole to the power minus 1 suppose this is number 2 differentiating 2 with respect to t differentiating 2 with respect to t we get with respect to t we get Differentiating two with respect to t, we get rate of decrease of acceleration is we have to show that this is equal to f cube uh, d to t by d t square. We have to show this one. Differentiate this with respect to uh, it will be d f by d t will be equal to minus one phi dash v whole to the power minus 2 d dt of phi dash v phi dash v this is equal to you may write it here graph of decrease of acceleration will be equal to 1 by phi dash v whole square with respect to t differentiation first differentiate this with respect to v it will be divinity it will be like this it will be like this right or uh, or uh, one thing you may you may write it as like this also phi dash v will do the power by dash v phi dash v will do the power minus v we may write like this also now what is the vdt it is nothing but acceleration yeah the vdt is equal to acceleration yeah. acceleration f yeah. this means minus d of dt rate of decrease of acceleration equal to phi dash v 
whole to the power minus 1 whole square phi double dash v into acceleration since dv dt equal to f equal to the acceleration right very simple now see equation number 2 f equal to f dash v whole to the power minus 1 f dash v whole to the power minus 1 can be replaced by f by 2 can be replaced by f by 2 it should be f square phi double dash v again f by 2 by 2 f equal to phi dash v whole to the power minus 1 whole to the power minus 1 this is equal to f cube phi double dash v means minus df by dt equal to this. Suppose this is number 3. This is number 3. This is number 3. Again, 1 implies. What is 1? t equal to phi v. t is regarded as a function of the velocity. t is equal to phi v. t is regarded as a function of velocity v. This is number 1. Differentiating 1 with respect to V this time. Differentiating 1 with respect to V. 1 with respect to V. You will get dt by dV equal to phi dash V. Again differentiating with respect to V. Again differentiating with respect to V. with respect to v d2t dv square equal to phi double dash v this is number 4 from 3 and 4 phi double dash v can be replaced by this phi double dash v can be replaced by d2t by dv square from 3 and 4 we get From 3 and 4 we get. From 3 and 4 we get. What we get? Uh, minus df by dt equal to f q phi double dash v replace it by d2 t by dv square. Therefore, rate of decrease of acceleration. Rate of decrease of acceleration is this proved. F cube d two t by dv square. Rate of this decrease of acceleration is this. Therefore, we have proved this. Perhaps uh, you understand this. Now, let us try to solve this pro the problem number six. Let us try to solve the problem number six. <coughs> Let me give you the sums to write down. Perhaps you have written everything. Let me remove it. Now, a particle starting from rest moves along a straight line so that its acceleration at time d is given by this. Acceleration is given by this. Starting from rest. It is given that the particle starts from rest. This means that the initial velocity of the particle is zero. A particle starting from rest means the initial velocity of the particle is zero. Acceleration is given to be equal to this. Acceleration has been given in terms of time t. So that its distance from the origin, from the origin means zero, 
at the end of five seconds. At the end of five seconds is this. At the end of five seconds is this. It is very simple. First, <coughs> first, given that acceleration, this is equal to sine t plus 1 by t plus 1 whole square. 1 by t plus 1 whole square. Sin t plus 1 by t plus 1 whole square. Sin t plus 1 by t plus 1 whole square. This means divinity. Sin t plus. You may write t plus 1 whole to the power minus 2. t plus 1 whole to the power minus 2. This means the p, p, is, p is velocity. P velocity. P is equal to velocity. Therefore, the VVT stands for the acceleration. The VVT will be acceleration. This means the V equal to sin T plus T plus 1 whole to the power minus 2 dt. Now, integrating with uh, integrate would say, oh, integrating we get. Integrating we get. We get. Integration dv equal to integration sin t plus t plus 1 whole to the power minus 2 dt plus a where a is the constant of integration where a is the constant of integration where a is the constant of integration where a is the constant of Suppose this is number one. No, no, not, not one. No. This means P equal to integration of this uh, will be equal to minus cos T plus T plus 1 whole to the power minus 2 plus 1 means minus 1 by minus 1 plus A. This means P equal to minus cos T minus 1 by T plus 1 plus A. Initially, initially, the particle starts from rest. Start from rest. Initially, velocity equal to zero. When t equal to zero, velocity equal to zero because the particle starts from rest. Starting from rest. Since the, velocity, since the particle starts from this, the particle starts from this. From this. Since the particle starts from this, therefore the velocity of the particle is equal to zero. Therefore from one you will get, therefore one uh, you will get zero equal to minus cos zero, minus one by zero plus one plus a. This means a equal to cos 0 means 1 plus 1 equal to 2. a is equal to 2. Therefore, a is equal to 2. Substitute the value of a in 1. You will get. Substitute the value of 1 in 2. Uh, value of a in 1 we get. Therefore, 1 implies. You may write 1 implies. This means that we, have, uh, we are going to substitute the value of a in 1. Simple. Minus B equal to minus cos T. Minus 1 by T plus 1. Plus 2. Plus 2. This means dx dt, rate of change of displacement, is the velocity. Minus 1 by T plus 1 plus 2. Rate of change of displacement. This means dx equal to minus cos T. Minus 1 by t plus 1 plus 2 dt. dt. <coughs> See the question. 
its distance from the origin at the end of pi second. What is the distance travelled by the particle from the origin at the end of pi second? At the end of pi second. <coughs> late. Now from this late, capital H beta distance covered by the particle or travelled by the particle by the particle from the starting point from the origin at the end of from the starting point when the, from the origin at the end of pi second end of pi second Suppose x is the total distance travel by the particle from the initial position up to the position uh, when it travels uh, a total time pi seconds. Pi seconds. <coughs> Therefore, uh, one. Suppose this is number two. This is number two. The x equal to this. This is number two. Integrating two, we get. Integrating two, we get. Integrating 2 we get integration dx equal to integration minus cos t minus 1 by t plus 1 plus 2 dt here x equal to t equal to at the initial uh, position x is equal to 0 and t equal to 0 and when it travels pi seconds, we have supposed that the total distance covered is capital H. It is capital H. Now we have to find the value of capital H. And we have to show that that capital H equal to this in terms of time. Twice pi minus. We have to show that capital H is equal to twice pi minus log of pi plus 1. Just integrate this. Very simple. This means it is x 0 to capital X equal to minus it is sin t minus log t plus 1 plus twice t t equal to 0 to pi. Here it is x is equal to 0 to x. This means capital X minus 0 equal to minus sine pi minus log pi plus 1 plus twice pi minus uh, put 0 minus sine 0 minus log 0 plus 1 plus 2 times of 0 2 times of 0 Now, this means x equal to x equal to sin pi equal to 0 sin 0 equal to 0 Therefore, it will be 0 minus log of pi plus 1 plus twice pi and uh, it will be equal to minus minus 0 minus log 1 Plus zero. This means here we write since sin zero equal to sin pi equal to zero. Sin zero sin pi will be equal to zero. X equal to twice pi minus log of pi plus one. Since log one equal to again zero, log one equal to again zero. Therefore, x equal to twice minus log of pi plus one x is equal to this. Proof. Hence proof. In the next class, we shall meet again and uh, we shall discuss problems 
on the, when a particle moves under variable acceleration, under variable acceleration. After that, we shall discuss about simple harmonic person, resisting medium, and the tangential and normal components of velocities and accelerations, radials and transverse velocities and accelerations. Also, in the sterics portion also, Lamy's theorem, all, all the problems, including catenary, um, center of gravity, friction, all uh, will be discussed. Today, I want to stop here. Thanks for attending my class. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.